It seems extra still around me. I think we'll record. Growing up, I was a C student. It wasn't that I didn't care. I loved learning, and still do. But I didn't care about what the teacher thought, about what I had learned. By the time I reached high school, I had the opportunity to have some very interesting teachers. I believe they were trying to wake us up. And one of these teachers allowed us to grade ourselves. When she asked me what I thought I should receive as a grade, I told her a C, again explaining what I just told you. I had learned so much, and I loved her class, but I never did any of the take-home assignments or offered anything external to my own mind. And she told me I would receive a B. And it's no different today. I can only offer you something that I would enjoy. Something that interests me. With the hopes that it might interest you as well. With that said, welcome. Here I find myself at the Saltaire. We've looked at the Saltaire before, what seems like many years ago, and now it's been floating around the Tartaria community because it completely fits in this old world research. Antiquitec, domes and spires in the middle of nowhere, seeming to be beyond the needs of a bathhouse for these swimmers, and I believe I did look at the history of this years ago, but today I want to have another look and see what they really say about this salt air or salt palace. Maybe 20 years ago I saw a music concert in this building. It no longer looks like this. Today it looks more like this. Pretty lame in comparison. I'm not even sure if it's the same building. Completed in 1893. What reason could we have to build something like this today and over 120 years ago? It's not even in Salt Lake City. Let me show you. Here we have Salt Lake City, and somewhere out here is the Salt Air. I'm not even sure where it is. They're not even sure where it is. Okay, here we go. About 19 minutes past the airport. I mean, really, it seems like it takes 19 minutes to get to the airport. But nonetheless, out here on the edge of this lake, as random as anything could be, the people decided to build this. Now again, if we look at the old pictures, the whole thing's in water, and looking much more glorious than this building with a mere seven puny domes. Quite a few domes missing. Can we park the man down here? And here we go. So, no more swimming all around it. And I think this is an interesting clue. We have this massive tower up here, perhaps part of the Kennecott mine, and they're just mining the hell out of this mountain. To this day, ruining the water source in West Valley, and Salt Lake would be out here. And this Saltair, pretty much being on the north flank of these mountains and what seems like an obelisk. Currently, I think smoke does come out of it periodically. And I can't help but feel like this original building had a much greater purpose than some silly bathhouse as seen here. I've never known a single person that has ever swam in the Salt Lake. It's actually kind of gross. And were these swimmers just posing to help explain away this anomaly found in early Salt Lake City. And again, this is the footprint. Really strange, swampy, and a lot of anomalies out here. It's seen with these, what I believe are ancient lions. Just a whole mess of activity that is not being utilized today. Right off the side of the highway, over here as well. The Kennecott Tailing Pond, number one. And really looking like the Civilization Wipeout Pond. Perhaps an old star fort was here. And really a lot of anomalous angles out here. 
And again, it was completed in 1893. It was jointly owned by a corporation associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And the Salt Lake and Los Angeles Railway, which was constructed for the express purpose of serving the resort. So they're calling it a resort. It's the name that has been given to several resorts located on the southern shore of the Great Salt Lake. So very fascinating. Now we learn that there were several resorts, perhaps of this nature. Saltaire was not the first resort built on the shores, but the most successful. It was designed by architect Richard Kletting, said to have designed many buildings, including the state capitol, the Enos Wall Mansion, the original Salt Palace, and the original Saltaire Resort Pavilion. We talked about this man before when reviewing the history of the capital. He apparently won a contest to build a capital in the same fashion as all capitals found everywhere. Why even hold a contest? The Saltaire rested on over 2,000 posts and pilings, many of which remain and are still visible over 110 years later. And that would be all these pillars that it's sitting on. Just absolutely stupid to think that a people in an early time period would just go out and build in the water. Not to mention the impossibility and complication imposed on your newly built structure. The Saltaire was a family place intended to provide safe and wholesome Recreation with the open supervision of church leaders. Trains left every 45 minutes from Salt Lake, bringing passengers to and from the Saltaire. The Saltaire was one of the early amusement parks, and for a time, the most popular family destination west of New York. It was so successful, the church finally sold the resort in 1906. Only worth hanging on to for a little over 10 years. What is the church doing investing in resorts on lakes in this early time period? Only to walk away from their investment after 10 years. A swimming resort seeming very churchy. And that's the end of that story. That's the history. Now we move into demolition. Does this make any sense? Again, in our research, we tie such buildings to other buildings found throughout the realm. We understand these as ether, atmospheric gathering technology, antiquitech. We see these same antennas found on buildings all over the world. This is not unique to Salt Lake, and this is not cheap. This is fabricated and is clearly past technology, not ornamentation, and they're found on all the buildings. And in this case, really lending to this theory when discarding the narrative and examining it with fresh eyes, here from one side gathering the ether from the air, always placed as high up as possible, as the charge is greater, hence the reason for towers and monuments and really placing this tech as high up as possible. And now to further this technology, they have placed it out in the salt water. Salt water is a great conductor of electricity, and this would be a good reason for building a building of this nature out in the water. No other good reason could be given, especially in an early time period where resources are limited and there would be a great need for simplification of everything. This is not simple. This is anything but simple. When we look at the history of Salt Lake City, we are shown something simple. In one breath, they want to portray this as 1880s Salt Lake City, and 10 years later, we're building things like this? From this to this. Is this a 10-year progression? But the truth is this portrait of 1880s Salt Lake City is absolutely false. Reading their narrative without putting the puzzle pieces together, this is what we would expect 
of early settlers. However, 30 years before this photograph is supposedly taken, they have begun construction of this Salt Lake Temple, we are told. In the 1850s, long before this picture, we are told they constructed a prison like this, only to tear it down. And also in 1850, they were building lime kilns, looking like Roman vaults, a handful of non-Mormon cathedrals, such as this one seen here, four-story apartment buildings, complete with concrete facades over a brick core. And it can't be both. And what about this anomalous Great Salt Lake, always next to a barren wasteland? This, I think, is a great site of cataclysm. When we look at old maps, we see what looks like the Salt Lake, or this area, connecting to the sea. Back when California was an island, and this whole area seems to have been ravaged, and really reminding me of the Dead Sea in Israel, a very salty wasteland. Very healing today, a lot of people do take a dip just for the therapeutic properties. But again, I think the site of a cataclysm. At the Dead Sea, we do have history, at least biblical, of it raining sulfur by the hand of God and destroying this area. And what we have left is a great salty sea. And taking this story, again with fresh eyes, we may be able to apply this to all salt lakes. And this being a reset, but a reset even before this time period. A reset back in a biblical time, whenever that may have been. Most certainly not what we are told. But usually we examine a more modern reset, which is that of these people. Whoever built this, which I believe was not the early Mormons, or settlers of Salt Lake City. But these people, who came after this great reset, that created this wasteland and undrinkable water, was before these builders. These builders simply availed themselves of this seeming useless water body, and I believe built a power plant and tapped into this available energy. And I believe these people took full advantage of the remains of their past civilizations, whatever form they came in, just as we and our modern people took advantage of the demise and leftover remains of this civilization that built structures like this, and this, and this. Here's a look at other great salt lakes found all throughout the realm. And these are just some of them. And were these really impact zones from past destruction in which we can only speculate about? Much easier to look at the last reset and try to make some kind of sense out of it. But very difficult if it's not pointed out to you. And here I want to go through these slides. These were submitted by viewers, and I thank you for this. Here I'm sure many of you have seen this underwater waterfall. And now this landmass seeming very artificial and square and covered up perhaps with some trees. And what we have here is what looks like a waterfall underneath the water. And perhaps this is attributed to different saline contents, fresh water mixing with salt water, one being heavier than the other, but really giving a peek as to what's underneath us. What is the nature of this realm? And here we can see the location of this waterfall in Madagascar, and looking very Star 40 right above it. We're told it was first discovered in 975 AD. Of course it was, by Arabs. And the big chunk sticking up above the waterfall is a basalt monolith. We've discussed basalt monoliths before. We can see some here at Giant's Causeway in Ireland and Devil's Tower in Wyoming, really seeming like the remains of trees. And when it comes to Devil's Tower, I have always seen it as a tree stump ever since my youth. I don't care what anybody says. But when it comes to this formation, especially with this artificial coastline seeming anything but natural, I could also see this being a melted building 
And perhaps this waterfall simply being part of some ancient giant plumbing. And what about plumbing this whole realm? We've discussed that before. Everything seeming to tie back to the underground. Tunnels kept secret to most, seeming to connect every major site throughout this realm. And again, seeming like some great technology was being employed that's no longer in use. Could this drainage system have become plugged up and malfunctioned? Could it have sent water coursing upwards, flooding the realm? This plug hole is found in England at the Lady Bower Reservoir. And again, thank you for this share. This looks like some excellent boots on the ground and absolutely mind-blowing. The stonework around it. Just think about plumbing your house. Here we're talking about plumbing on a grand and massive scale in a very early time period. Now, not even being utilized. Not even understanding what this may have really been. Here we see a plug hole on each side of the reservoir. Massive. And it looks like it feeds in through these ports. And I'm sure they would have been utilizing this, at the very least, in a hydroelectric fashion. We're told it was constructed in less than 10 years, and it took two years to fill. It was officially opened in 1945. We're told it's not a solid masonry dam, but rather a clay cord earth embankment. And it sure looks like masonry to me. Nevertheless, when we look at early photos of this region, we see there used to be a city where this dam is now located. A repeated theme in our historical narrative. Flooding out the old world, erasing as much as they can. Even in the background here, we see a very angled wall, perhaps the remains of something ancient. And again, if these plug holes may have malfunctioned, or some other event flooding out our entire realm with both water and extreme heat, then most of what we see would be unrecognizable from the civilization that existed several resets ago. One such civilization can be seen here, found at the Yonaguni Monument in Japan. And in my opinion, this is one of the best proofs of an advanced civilization that we have been told nothing about. Here we can see the location in Japan, an island off the southwest body of Japan. And, of course, this place is in ruins. But yet so much is preserved, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that this was created by some of the most advanced people that are never spoken about in our narrative. Anywhere from 4 to 25 meters below the surface, we're told this is made of sandstone and mudstones. And this really lends to the idea that there is no natural landmass. At one point, once upon a reset, long ago, this realm was built from the ground up. And what we call mountains, and hills, and canyons, are only the remains of this past civilization. And perhaps because this is underwater, it was preserved. There's no rubble on it, no vegetation growing. And here's ultimately what this complex looks like. Down here we see an arched gate, an entryway, and what is this? A city, a vehicle, a piece of tech? Let me know what you think. Some believe this could be part of Lemuria, or the land of Mu, a people that existed at the time of Atlantis which would have been on the other side here. Of course, Plato talked about these two continents sinking into the oceans. And did they really sink? Or did the water level rise, erasing most of the population of this time? But we don't have to go deep into the ocean to find the remains of the past civilizations. Again, this, I believe, is a very old one. But here, a share submitted by Ramon shows 1920 New Jersey, a tunnel that is 22 miles long, and looks like this. 1920. Now this is way overkill 
for a 1920s sewer system. And Ramon tells us, sometimes they call sewers water mines. He says he has a 74-year-old friend who told him about some entrances he knew about. He also explained he used to clean Roman pipes in the outskirts of town in his younger years. Some were over six kilometers long. According to the narrative, the Etruscans laid the first underground sewers in the city of Rome around 500 BC. Of course, I don't believe in these timelines, or the Romans for that matter, but this is the narrative. Building underground sewers in 500 BC, and we're supposed to swallow this. And here's a look at the sewer system in Paris. Everything in red, and all these sewer systems looking the same, no matter which country you're in. The oldest sewer systems look like this. Here we can see the sewers of Hamburg, Germany, and really resembling a modern-day subway system. Down here would be the tracks, and we have the platform, and here's a ticket office in New York City, and look at this junky little ticket booth made of wood that they just stuffed in the corner of this subterranean inheritance. Doesn't matter. Make a ticket booth in this corner, turn parts of it into a sewer system, and other parts into subways. And lastly, I just want to tie this into petrification. These salty lakes have a high deposit of sodium carbonate, which was once used in Egyptian mummification, we are told. And sure enough, this salt water does petrify. Here we can see in Lake Natron in Tanzania, a swan that has turned to stone. And here I've turned the swan sideways, and it looks like some kind of a scorpion. Here is a calcified dove. I imagine they must fall in and somehow get out and not faring well. And here we see a bat. I believe this is upside down. He's actually hanging. Well, I think that's it for today. If you enjoy coffee, be sure to check out my roast on Amazon. And I do hope you enjoyed. Do have a blessed day. Please like, comment, and subscribe.